Hey guys, I'm out in this forest right now. I don't know if you can see how dense it is. Uh, it's just this very dense forest and because of that there's very little light that hits, uh, hits the floor here. Uh, I've just got these little patches of light that shine through and it just gives this forest this really cool feeling. It's got this very like dark, not in a bad way, but like dark moody feeling. And it's just really cool, such a <laughs> cool place to be. I passed through this area a few years ago while I was out backpacking. And uh, the reason I came back to it to do some exploring today is because of what I saw when I was out backpacking a few years ago out here. I was passing through and I saw an owl, a uh, great gray owl. Uh, great grays are my favorite, all-time favorite species of bird but I've only been able to photograph them just a handful of times before, so I wanted to make it back out to this forest and uh, do a little exploring, see if I can find another one to photograph. They're just beautiful, beautiful birds. I hope I can find one so I can show you guys because they're just magnificent birds. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really hopeful for them. I'm gonna keep going though. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can find. Getting closer, got a uh, great gray owl feather just stuck to the tree here. So I know they're in the area. Let's keep going. So I found something else here that leads me to believe that there is still an owl or multiple owls in the area. I don't know if you can see this like discolored patch on the ground here. Uh, this area, this is actually where owls have been pooping. Um, this is just, yeah, a bunch of owl poop here. <laughs> uh, it's like this whitewash type poop that they uh, poop and <laughs> usually they'll sit up in a tree. They, a lot of times owls have preferred roosts that they sit in and they'll sit up in that tree and then when they go, they'll projectile their poop out and it, it uh, has collected here over time and I can smell it as well. It's got a pretty strong smell to it. Um, there might be an owl pellet in here too. I'll, I'll look around, but uh, yeah, leads me to believe that there has been an owl here recently. There's some flies buzzing around too, so it's recent enough where uh, it's not completely just old and dried out. Uh, and it, it uh, yeah, like I say, it smells fairly strong. So I'm gonna keep looking. Uh, as you can see, as I look, I'm not just looking for owls. Uh, you need to use all your senses when you're looking for wildlife. And I've touched on this a little bit in some of my previous videos before. But when I'm looking for wildlife, I try to use every sense that I can. So not only am I looking, you know, for owls, uh, but I can smell this so I can, you know, use my sense of smell when looking for owls. Uh, I listen for owls obviously, but other animals that might indicate that there's an owl in the area. Uh, a lot of rodents like uh, chipmunks or squirrels will uh, notify you real quick if there's a potential predator in the area. So I'm using just all my senses while I'm out here looking for owls and rather than just scanning with my eyes and ignoring everything else, uh, I've got a lot uh, better chance of finding animals if I'm trying to really tune into everything that's going around going on around me so I'm gonna dig through this a little bit uh, see if there's an owl pellet nearby I was like breaking those open seeing what they're eating but uh, if there's not then I'll, I'll 
keep going to see what we can find there. There's one small owl pellet here that I can see. I might be missing one somewhere. Uh, it's pretty small though, but there are some bones and stuff in it. Uh, sometimes in the, the big owl pellets you can break them apart and find sometimes even like a skull of a mouse or something in there. Uh, this pellet's too small for any large bones to be in there, so I'm not going to break it open, but it's pretty cool. Uh, again, I know there's a owl in the area, so let's uh, let's keep going. Guys, we have an owl. I came up on him real quick. I was going through the trees, and I look over, and he was like right there. Um, and he just looked at me, and then he looked back the other way. Um, he was. It looks like he was hunting. So I backed off as quietly as I could, just to not, not to disturb the ground around him where he was focusing. So I backed off and then he flew to another perch and I watched him and then he flew to another one. He's just, it, it looks like he's hunting right now. Just trying to, trying to see what he can find. Shoot, I don't see him anymore. Um, it, it's hard for me to keep up in these trees, honestly. It's so thick, but he can move so easily in here. But I have, I have a hard time moving around in here. But uh, yeah, I'll keep looking for him. I'm so excited right now. It has been so long since I've been able to photograph one. So I'm, oh, my heart is just <laughs> it's racing. I'm so excited. Uh, he's. It looked like he was headed down to this more open area down here. I'm hoping he goes in there because it would be so much easier for me to photograph him in there than to uh, try to pick through these trees to get a good angle. Um, so I'm hoping he's headed down there because I lost him, I don't, I don't see him anymore. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep going. If I don't find him here in the trees, I'm gonna head down to that, that uh, more open area and hopefully he makes his way down there. But uh, guys, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, let's go.
you guys what an amazing evening I just had so I uh, found that owl again it took me a while but I found him and he ended up making his way down to that little uh, clearing area and uh, he was just like super focused on hunting I didn't see him catch anything but you know he was flying all over the place and uh, he seemed super focused I didn't want to bother him so I, I kept pretty far back and occasionally he'd fly in pretty close and sit there and then he'd fly somewhere else but you know he was all over the place and he was moving a lot I mean like every, every couple minutes uh, sometimes he would land somewhere for a few seconds and fly somewhere he was just he was all over the place so you know what it was awesome um, I got some pictures that I'm really happy with there was some awesome color down there, some aspens and other vegetation that was changing color. So it uh, made for some really nice backgrounds. And I, yeah, I've got some pictures. I, I need to check them to make sure they're sharp. But um, from what I saw on the camera, they're, they're good. So got some pictures that I'm really happy with. If you guys like this video, if you like the great gray owls, uh, go check out another channel on YouTube. His name is Steve Mathis. I believe I'm saying that last name correctly. If I'm not Steve, I'm sorry. But uh, you know, his videos are awesome. He does a lot of amazing great gray owl stuff. Just some of the best great gray owl pictures I've ever seen um, are his. And he just, he does some awesome videos with them. He's a very ethical photographer from what I see in his videos and from what I hear from photographers who do know him. Uh, he just seems like a real, real good guy. Go check out his videos. And he doesn't just do great gray owls. He does a lot of other awesome wildlife, just fun videos that he does. So go check him out. Again, I'll put a link to the uh, channel in the description below. Guys, I gotta hike out of here though. Apparently I cannot walk and talk at the same time. So I'm gonna put this away, hike on out. Thank you so much for following along and uh, joining in with my adventures this week. I hope you guys are enjoying this squeaky tree up here. <laughs> but uh, if you can hear that, you probably can't even hear it and you just think I'm crazy. But anyways, I'm just rambling on at this point. So I'm gonna go. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Always helps me out so much. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.